All right, so this exercise gives us a way to me to get a lower bound on the measure of the set where a given random variable is positive. Well, a random variable which is greater than or equal to zero, it tells you where it gives you a lower bound on the measure of the set where it's strictly greater than zero. Okay, so the nice thing is it sort of tells you how to go about doing this. It says to just apply Cauchy-Schwarz to this function here. So we call that Cauchy Schwarz, Schwartz, Schwarz. But what does it tell us? If you take the integral of f times g d mu, then this is less than or equal to the two norm of f times the two norm of g. Um, so this is a particular case of Holder's inequality, which says that this will hold if you replace two, if you replace the twos on the right hand side with p and q, where one over p plus one over q equals one. And two and two just happens to be a particular example of that because a half plus a half is one. Okay, so let's put this because the thing that we're trying to prove is in terms of um, expected values, let's translate this. So this is just the expected value of absolute value of f times g. And now let's see here, the two norm of f, so that's the integral of f of the norm of f squared, and then the square root of that whole thing. So integral or expected value of norm of f squared, and we take the square root times, then the same thing for g. Now I suppose I don't need to put absolute value signs here before squaring it, but um, just so that it, this is like super general, I figured I'd include it anyways. Also it's useful for um, like if f and g are complex valued functions, although in this case they aren't. So we simply set f to be our random variable y and g to be the indicator function where y is strictly greater than zero yields what? Okay, so let's, so this is going to be the expected value of y times this indicator function for y greater than zero. So less than or equal to um, we have the expected value of y squared. I'll drop the square. I'll drop the absolute values because this is a positive function, square root. And then we multiply by the expected value of. We take this indicator function and square it. And then the square root of this entire thing. Okay. So if we look at the left hand side, so the expected value of y times the indicator, where y is greater than zero. So this is just the integral of y over the set where y is strictly greater than zero. But we know that y is either going to be equal to zero or strictly greater than zero at any point because y is greater than or equal to zero. So the, ex so the integral of y is just the integral of y over the set where y is zero plus the integral of y over the set where y is greater than zero. But if we're integrating over the set where y is zero, then that integral is just going to be zero because the function is zero at all of those points. And so this is actually precisely the expected value of y. Because the um, the expected value of y times the indicator function of y equals zero it doesn't contribute anything to the value of the integral. Okay, and what do we have on the right hand side? We've still got the square root of expected value of y squared. And now if we look at the indicator of this set, where y is greater than zero, that's going to be either zero or one, so squaring it has no effect. So it's just the indi the integral of the indicator function of the set where y is strictly greater than zero. And so what this gives us is that if, if we integrate a function which is one on this set and zero elsewhere, then the integral will be precisely the measure of that set. So this is simply the measure of the set where, let's just write it like this, y is strictly greater than zero. 
and then we've still got the square root. And now all these things are going to be positive numbers and so we can just go ahead and square them and not worry about how it affects the inequality. Because like if the expected value of y could be negative, then we couldn't necessarily just square both sides of this. Um, if, if the right hand side were positive and the left hand side could be negative, then squaring it could cause you to reverse the inequality. Um, but that's not something we have to worry about here. So this simplifies the stuff on the right. And now, yeah, we just have this. And now we just move things around a little bit. So we get the, um, the measure of the set where y is greater than zero. I'll just write it over here. And then we have to reverse the inequality and we basically just move the expected value of y squared into the denominator of the other side. I suppose you have to assume that this, the integral of y squared is non-zero in order for this to work. Um, right? Well, let's think about this. Hmm. Well, in, yeah, in fact, I almost wonder if this, instead of being the, the expected value of y squared is less than infinity, I think it should be greater than zero. Strictly greater than zero, because if it's equal to zero, well, wait, if y squared is zero, then since y is, I, I think the fact that y is strictly greater than or equal to zero Oh wait, yeah, if y is identically zero, then, um, yeah, this, this inequality doesn't make sense. So I think, I think this is what we need here. Because what if the expected value of y squared were infinite? Um, then I suppose we could have some issues like if, um, if the expected value of y were also infinite, then we'd have something of the form infinity squared over infinity, and that can be sort of difficult to deal with. Um, like you'd have to prove something. I think there might be some other nuances here, like you gotta make sure that this um, fraction works, but otherwise this is, this is basically, so, so long as you get like nice numbers here and everything, um, this works out. And so yeah, that's what we wanted to prove, and so we're done.